Hi, this is Christoph with Scalar Code, and this is episode number four of the Redis series with Laravel. In this episode, we're going to take a look at caching database queries, right? So let's pretend like you have a blog or something that's hitting the database for information. And a lot of times it's information that doesn't change very often, like a blog post, right? You might edit it from time to time, but for the most part, it's pretty static. So it doesn't really make sense to always fetch it from the database. And so that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at storing this in the, the database query in Redis for a certain amount of time, like a few minutes, maybe a few seconds, uh, depending on the, the type of data, it could also be forever. And um, so I'm starting with a basic blog application and page here. And this is just listing three of my article posts I posted in my database before this started. And I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as how I did the, the blog, uh, because I really want to focus on the caching as aspect, but I do think it's important that you understand b the basic architecture of it uh, so you don't get lost of how I'm implementing, implementing this. So let's start in the routes.php where I have my, my main here, main route here, and we're going to have a blog controller and we're going to show the blog when we go to this URL here. And so if I go to my blog controller here, this is the show blog function that it's going to call. And as you can see, I am storing my posts in a post variable and I'm doing a post fetch all. Now this post here is in my construct. And basically I'm just passing in a dependency injection with a contract, a post contract. Um, I just created that. I like to have my own directory with contracts in them. And so this just shows you all the different functions I want to have in my contracts, uh, I mean my post contract, and then here's the post model itself that implements this contract. And in this post model, in the construct, I'm just adding a Redis connection so we have access to it inside of our model. And then um, that's just to implement the views from the previous example. Um, and then because we're actually going to use the cache instead of just the Redis one later on, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. What I want to show you here is just the fetch all for now. And then uh, that's just going to fetch everything from my database. So let's go back in here and show you that it is indeed actually pulling this stuff from the database. And I'm going to do that by first of all, going up here and adding use DB for database. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have access to it so that I can log uh, or enable the query logs. Okay, that's going to give me access to what's going on with this call in the database. And then you access it by doing a get, uh, get, whoops, get query logs. And I'm going to store that in a variable called uh, log. And I'm just going to print that out because I want to see the result of it. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's refresh. And you see up here the array that's posted here. It shows you the query that went against my database. If I had any bindings, which I do not, and how long it took. So if I refresh again, you see there's a different time because it's a different query. And every time I refresh, it's just hitting the database. And so the way that we can take that load off is by storing the information for a certain amount of time in our Redis cache. And the way that we're going to do that is we don't even have to change anything in our show blog function. We're going to go in our model here and we're going to change this function directly here. Okay, so everything, every time I fetch all anywhere in my application, it's going to have to go through this. And what we're going to do here is I've already added my use cache here. So make sure you have that in there or you won't have access to cache. And then all you have to do is call cache, remember, and we're going to give it a key. I'm going to name this blog posts cache. And then the second parameter is how long you want to store it for. I'm going to put one for one minute. You could put 60 for 60 minutes, etc. Or you could also do forever. And I think instead of remember, it's just forever and it doesn't take in a, 
a thing like that, but I'd have to check. I can't quite remember the syntax. And then inside of this, I'm going to put this right here. And then I'm just going to return the result. So the way that this is going to work is that when I call fetch all from my controller, it's going to check and see if I already have something stored in my cache. If I do, I'm just going to return that and just completely ignore what's inside of here. This right here is the database call. But if I don't have any key like this in my database, or I'm sorry, in my Redis cache, then you do need to hit the database and give me a fresh copy. And then you're going to store it and it's going to count down for another minute, which I decided here. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to go back to my controller and I already have the database query log here just to see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, whoops, post 36. What did I do? Oh. And so there you have a time of 0.83. So you see that it did hit the database. But then if you refresh again, the, the array is empty because it did not hit the database. And I can keep refreshing, keep refreshing, keep refreshing over and over again for a minute and you're not gonna hit the database. If we go in our Redis command line on our server and we list all keys, well, it, it's not there. And the reason that it's not there is actually because we don't have it in Redis right now. What am I talking about? If we go down to our environment, and I created this environment here, but this is the default one that comes when you first install Redis. And as you see, the cache driver is using file. So it's actually storing on the server files right now. It's not actually storing in Redis. So you need to, to make sure that you understand this and uh, the differences. And so when, when I change this to cache driver Redis, and then I go back here, it's going to hit the database again. But now, when I go back here, it is there. The key Laravel blog post cache. Oops, I did not mean to do that. There you have it. That's what it looks like. That's the result of your database query. One possible problem with this is if you're storing a lot of things like this, you're going to run out of memory. It's, it's going to be a lot of data to store in memory. I mean, of course, if you have a lot of, of memory, that's not going to happen anytime soon, but it depends on a lot of things. It depends on how much memory you have on your server, on how much data you're trying to save in there, etc., cetera, and uh, how long you keep it in there for. So you have to keep that in mind. If you'd like to learn more about how cache works in Laravel, then you can take a look at the files in vendor, Laravel, and then look for the cache folder. And you have a few different PHP files in here, one of which is for memcached, one for Redis, the file store, which was used earlier. So if you scroll through these files, read the comments, look at the functions and how they work together, you'll get a deeper understanding of how the caching uh, works in Laravel and frankly just get a better understanding of how Laravel works in general. So this is a really good way of taking your, your learning a next step forward. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please please leave them in the comment section. I'd really like to get some feedback on what you think about the format of these videos and if you think I'm going too slow or too fast, uh, I want to get some feedback so I can keep making these videos better and better. Thank you for watching and have a great day.